The International Energy Agency has just released its Iraq energy outlook. And I'm pleased to say we can now talk to the executive director, Maria van der Hoeven. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us today. Um, Iraq, already the world's number three uh, oil exporter with three million barrels a day. But mm -hmm. how much more capacity is there? You're talking some huge numbers. Well, the numbers are huge, the resources are huge, and they can be explored at, at low cost also because of the geological ease. But coming back to the numbers, at this moment it's 3 million barrels a day, and uh, we expect it to be uh, around 6 million barrels a day by 2020, and 8, more than 8, by 2035. And that would mean that uh, Iraq will be the second producer worldwide after Saudi Arabia. Clearly, infrastructure investment is absolutely key here and you're again talking about water electricity and some truly astonishing numbers 530 billion dollars in order to unlock three trillion dollars in revenue these are huge numbers how is that going to happen these are really huge numbers and of course this is not going to happen uh, from today to tomorrow it needs it takes some time but if you really want to unlock these uh, this potential this potential of revenues you have to start investing today because there is quite a long lead time to, uh, to investments in, in, in the oil sector. And that means that there is not only the need for the, uh, the domestic investments, but also from the uh, foreign direct investments. And that means that you really have, uh, you need a need to have a stable investment climate. And that's one of the very important things that Iraq has going to work on. Well, that's obviously the next question. How stable is the political situation now in order for that to happen? What, what's your assessment of that? Well, it's not only about the political situation, it's also about the economic situation. That you know, there's a lot of money involved here. And everybody in Iraq knows, everybody, that if they really want to make use of that money, that, we, that, they, want, that they can get the revenues from these uh, oil resources, that they have to cooperate and that the political issues have got to be solved as soon as possible. Do you see that beginning to happen? What are the, the indicators here? We can see that it begins to happen and in our numbers they are Iraqi wide and I think this is important as well. It's not only about one region, it's about the whole country. And it's not just oil, natural gas, another huge opportunity. Yes, that's true. Uh, natural gas is another huge opportunity. At this moment a lot of uh, gas is being flared and it would be of uh, the utmost importance to stop that, not only because of the flaring itself, because of also of the money that you are burning. And the second reason why it's, of the third reason why it's also important, that is, if it's possible, and we think it is possible, and it should be done, that you replace, that you substitute oil now being used for electricity generation by gas, gas is cheaper, it will see to it that your uh, export revenues will be higher. So it, this is another reason mm. why gas is so important. And then, of course, is there a market, an export market for gas? Yes, there is. There is. And you talk about various scenarios as to the possibilities. What do you think is the most likely scenario that's going to happen in the next 10 to 15 years as to how Iraq develops? Well, we have three scenarios. Mm. One, of our, one, our, uh, one scenario is our central scenario. But, of course, if things are going better, then you could have a high scenario. But, of course, there can also happen some things where it brings you to a delayed scenario. But I think it would be extremely, extremely important for Iraq to uh, realize this central scenario because that will mean that we have this more than 8 million barrels a day pr production in 2035. And where do you see the money coming from? I mean, is, is it clear? Iraq clearly has the capacity, but the money's got to come from somewhere. Is it individual companies or is it countries that will develop it? How do you see that? It will be a mixed stress. We can see at this moment already there are individual companies and there are countries like China investing. And with this global slowdown, is that going to have an impact on how fast Iraq actually develops? Because clearly Iraq is a relatively easy place to get oil from compared with the Antarctic or the, or the Arctic. Um, is that the way things are going to go? Is that it's, it's easier to get to and it will develop more fast? Or is that going to get slowed down if the global economy slows down? There is uh, something else. It's not only about production, but it's also about logistics and transportation. You have to, f to bring the thing you think you produce, whether it's gas or whether it's, it's oil, you have got to bring it to the market, otherwise it doesn't work. So it's not only about the investment in production, but also the investment in logistics and in transportation, pipelines, energy terms, or whatever it is. And then, of course, there is the question about the, uh, the, the general development of the, of the global economy, because there is always there is always a connection between the development of the global economy and how much how much oil is going to be needed to support that.
Okay, Maria, thank you very much indeed for talking to us today. That's uh, Maria van der Herven, the Executive Director of the International Energy Agency. I'm Nigel Stevenson. This is Reuters.